While this might at first glance seem like a weird mashup of a jihadist or Palestinian nationalist recruitment video and some mobile game, all of these clips are in fact from the same game called Fursan al-Aqsa, the Knights of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This quite unusual game, so bad it's good style trailer combined with the concept of a game where anti-Western fighters are depicted as heroes made me certain that I needed to make a video that shines light on both this piece of media and the Western media's hypocritical behavior behavior when it comes to who gets to be the heroes in modern entertainment. Starting off with the launch trailer for Fursan al aqsa it firstly starts off with the emblem of the Brazilian Justice Ministry, which made me confused. Why is this apparent certification of a Brazilian government agency on a game about the Israel-Palestine conflict? Is it in fact even a possibility that the game's developers are Brazilian converts to Islam? This is rather exotic for lack of a better word. In terms of cinematography, Call of Duty 2022 sure has some competition now. Also, a little fun fact, that specific Allahu Akbar was taken from a guy reacting to a bombing during the Syrian civil war. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! It is also quite creative how the trailer between every single new scene has a screenshot of itself being condemned by either the Israeli or the Western media, something it wears proudly as a badge of honor. Apparently this arcade game also has objectives like carry the Palestinian baby wrapped in a kafiye. <laughs> this trailer also makes a not so subtle nod to Battlefield. <laughs> And finally, my favorite part of the trailer, an unalivening by Shark. Yes, that Megalodon has a Palestinian flag on it. Wait, this game is not only coming out on PC, but also on Xbox 360 and PS3. Didn't game developers stop making games for those consoles in 2013? So with the hope of having this and many more questions answered, I went into the comment section of the video to see if I couldn't get some kind of explanation. And it was here that I became 100% sure that I needed to make a video about this game. Any chance of this being ported to PlayStation? This is already available on PS3 and Xbox 360. Hacked consoles. What do they mean by hacked consoles? I'm extremely confused considering that the developers in the same comment section also stated the following. Uh, yes, I got authorization from Sony to release my game on PS4 and PS5. Microsoft did not approve of my game concept. But at least the game has consumer-friendly practices like mod support. I'm gonna need to mod the sound files for an oven timer every single time you kill one of these goblins. I will publish a tutorial later on how to mod for San al -Aqsa. It is a very easy game to mod. Racist mod support? Check. And firstly, no YouTube. If it wasn't already completely obvious, I do not condone this. And secondly, I highly doubt that even the developer was aware of this comment's context. But to be honest, a big part of why I felt an obligation to create this video is the elephant in the room that is also the factor that really makes this trailer so outlandish. The real reason as to why people are giving this game attention is because it portrays a real-life political movement that is strongly opposed to the Western geopolitical 
political interests of today as moral and heroic people. If this, on the other hand, had been a game about patriotic Westerners fighting against communists or nationalist Russians or Middle Easterners like in the entire Call of Duty Modern Warfare franchise, then no one would have written a single article about this game since it would simply just be another completely normal, somewhat silly action game. But the minute that the normally evil Middle Easterners, Russians or Chinese people are viewed as the good guys, the Western media loses their cool as seen by the many, many negative mentions of this simple arcadey game. So therefore, I also use this game as the perfect excuse to address the incredibly propagandistic way non-Western nations are portrayed in video games and other media. Finally, I'm sure you're wondering where can I buy this game and the game's developers are as kind as to answer that in the already infamous comment section. Praise to be Allah, it is already released on Steam, my brother. So I went over to Steam, the world's largest online games distribution service, who is by the way owned by Valve, the makers of Left 4 Dead and the legendary game Half-Life, to see what I could find. And according to Forsan al aqsas Steam reviews, it certainly seems like people were enjoying it. For San Alexa, the Knights of the Alexa Mosque is nothing short of a masterpiece. The movement, the shooting, the atmosphere dwarf any game that has been released in the last three years. Inshallah, For San Alexa will be Game of the Year 2022. For San Alexa beats Elden Ring. But what I also noticed on Steam was that most of the reviewers on the platform had only played the game for around 10 minutes, likely just to support the game's premise. So instead of buying the whole game for a whopping 16 euros, I decided to download the demo that the developers by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had allowed the public to access and from the first moment I started the game I knew that I was in for an experience since the introduction reminded me more of an Al Hayat Media Center production than a run-of-the-mill action game. Now starting off, for a demo, this actually comes with a good amount of content, both including a multiplayer component, two challenge maps, and missions. Are they good? Well, they're certainly entertaining. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's delve into Fursan Al-Aqsa, the Knights of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Fursan Al-Aqsa Training Camp. I wonder what that font is, I like it. Very green. I like the reggaeton beat. If I look too far away from the screen, the Palestinian flag disappears. Well, anyhow, let's check it out. Move forward, let's get that AK. Alright, I can't move forward. Because it's a demo or what? I promise you, I am not a kufar, my brothers. Let me join. Okay, so this is not necessarily a good sign. Literally, the first mission in the game, the training mission, is just broken. Located at the Gaza border, the Iron Dome is an air defense system developed by the Zionist forces to intercept and destroy short range missiles and artillery shells. We will jihad them. Allahu Akbar. Alright, let's do this. What am I gonna do? I like the music. It has this uh, Indiana Jones vibe to it. Alright, one guy down. Alright, alright. I like the game thus far. Killed two guys, got zero damage. Oh shit. Um, you gotta take out these little cameras here or it's immediate game over. Because then apparently your cover is blown. Shooting up the entire Israeli uh, military base. What the hell? The guy just starts screaming Allahu Akbar when you use the reload. Oh, the Triple kill. Do I get a discount at the local falafel store? Seriously though, I like the concept behind the game. I know I'm going to get a bunch of hate for this, but like the whole challenging, you know, the Western kind of media dominance, I really think is cool. So I, th I think it's cool that games, you know, made by China, well, Palestinians, whoever, um, come out and, and they get to show their side of the story and glorify themselves just the same as the Americans do for the Call of Duty franchise, which is literally nothing but killing Middle Easterners, Germans, Japanese people, and naturally, 
Of course, also Russians. Okay, so now I had finally played a snippet of the Notorious game, but this only left me with more questions, which I hope to have answered in an interview with the game's developer. But who were the developers, and how could I get into contact with them? Well, according to the game's launch trailer, Fursan Alexa is a Nadal Najim game, and after a bit of searching around, it appeared that the entire game was made by just one person, Nadal Najim. And the game's mission is, according to its Steam page, to provide an experience that, unlike Western games, depicts the Palestinians as the heroes and the West and Israel as the bad guys and I honestly find this vision interesting since the world is already full of games depicting everyone who doesn't align with the neoliberal political goals of today as the bad guys. But this didn't bring me any closer to understanding who Nadal Najim is. Is he a Brazilian convert to Islam or a Palestinian in Brazil or something else entirely? But this and much more was about to be explained after I reached out to him in his already infamous comment section where me and Nadal scheduled an interview. Why no publisher did want to get my game? Because they don't have balls of steel. I am a badass uh, game developer with balls of steel. Don't fear anyone. We are ready. We are ready to rock. Like, we will rock you. <laughs> I'm, I'm very honored with this invite to uh, interview. Are you a Brazilian convert to Islam or what is your, what is your background? I am a Brazilian son of uh, Palestinian immigrants. Oh, like that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. But uh, in religion, we say every Muslim is a convert in the sense that he comes back to his uh, destiny. This. My father, my father is a, a former Palestinian fighter as well. With what organization, may I ask? Fatah or Hamas? Uh, Fatah. Or? Oh, Fatah. Fatah. Oh, regarding this game, did you yourself develop it entirely by yourself or have other people also been involved? No, no, like I said, the technical part, I have done everything on my own and, and my father helped me with the, the, narr the narrative, the, the narrative, the history of the game. All right, guys, I'm going to go for the tried and tested Palestinian method of combat, also known as uh, knives. Slow motion. Who's ever heard about? Oh, my God, the gravity just left the chat. Get up. Get up. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, my brother. Allahu Akbar. Uh, the, yeah. Again, mission. Oh, we got a new. We got a proper like. <laughs> Guys, this has some of the best uh, music in any video game I have uh, ever played. Rejoice, O mother of the martyr. Rejoice. Prepare your son for his marriage in paradise. Tie the band on all your pain and spread his wedding handkerchief. Spread your anger against the oppressor. His injustice must be stopped. That music is a, 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 a mother singing happy because her, her son became a martyr and is going to, uh, to marry in paradise with the maiden of paradise. That's I also noticed that the music that you used in your trailer was uh, Fatah music, wasn't it? Yes, yes, we use it uh, the, because uh, uh, the Fatah movement is the, the first resistance uh, movement in Palestine. You cannot uh, uh, talk about Palestine resistance without talking about the, the Fatah movement. That's very interesting that you have this, uh, this like huge history with regards yeah, to yeah. the topic that you're covering. My father always uh, told me that uh, we need to make a media uh, work about Palestinian resistance to break this, this paradigm, this image we have in uh, American game is that Arab terrorists, Arab assassins. That is the, the, the main. All right, now I gotta find out where the non-believers are at. Oh, damn it, another damn camera. Something like this. Al Camaro. Should I start a gaming channel, guys? Probably not. Yeah, give me slow motion. No, Aldor does not want to open. Aldor! Abu Hajar! When Abu Hajar? Abu Hajar! Abu Hajar! Damn it. Reload, reload, reload. Ah, they actually killed me. I'm telling you guys, the music in this game is great. With regards to the response to your game, uh, obviously there's been positive response, but I've also seen that there has been some negative response. Like even in your trailer, you kind of like as like almost like a promo, you added these like quotations of different, I believe mainly Israeli yeah. newspapers. <laughs>
Yes, this is, this is marketing. This is a way. This is a, we need to use. Uh, I, I, I want I wanted to make an accolades trailer like those big like Elden Elden Ring accolades, like a game spot review nine ten. But I said to myself, until now, no game journal talk about my game. Who talked about my game? Uh, this real. So let's <laughs> use them as accolades. <laughs> okay, that is that is actually really funny. I mean, you're doing something very unique. Okay, from what I've seen regarding your game. I can kind of understand that one of your main motivators for making this game was that there was nothing quite like it on the market. You know, as you also mentioned yourself, everything else is always about how Westerners and people who align with Western geopolitical positions are the good guys yes. and whoever is against that political position yes. are the bad guys and they're just yes. NPCs who needs to be shot by the, um, yes. by the hero. And I guess you wanted yes. to switch that around. I have two more motivations for uh, this game. First, like you said, my father encouraged me from since I was a kid. So we, we one day we can make some work to change because this is not only on games. This is on, on, on books, on movies, on everything about Islam and Arabs. They're the, the tag, terrorist tag. So uh, like today, we know that video games are not just uh, for kids. No. Video games is another uh, entertainment uh, vehicle nowadays. I think that games have a, a bigger reach than any kind of media. So today, video games has a um, bigger power to spread a message. So that is our idea to do this, uh, to ch change the, this idea that the Arabs are terrorist uh, enemies, assassins. Why, in example, United States can have a superhero, uh, Captain America, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, uh, after the, the war in Afghanistan, Iraq, everything, no people will accept that image. The super American get uh, one uh, pistol, kill uh, 20 terrorists. Why we Arabs, Muslims, cannot have our, our superheroes? Exactly. So that was our idea. Oh, damn it. Damn camera almost. There you go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. There you go. I like some of the attention to detail in here, however. For example, this like aid pack is from the Red Crescent, which is the Muslim version of the Red Cross. Oh, dude. These cameras are so damn sneaky. I don't even get mad when I die. I got the camera and I destroyed everything. I won? Didn't I win? Wait, what, what more is there to do? I won! I actually won. Baby, I won. Palestine is free. You know, the yeah. game itself is more on the arcadey side, but the actual message of the game, which seems like the most important part for you yourself, which is, yes, you know, yes. this, um, this portrayal as Palestinians as noble fighters, who are fighting for, yes, yes. you know, their religion and their country. Um, yes. But then on the other hand, the game itself is also more on the arcadey side. Do you yourself yes. see that there is like a contrast between those two? Or have you kind of, uh, or what is, your, what is your idea there? Well, we don't want to create a war simulator. I myself don't have patience to, to play war simulator. I like something fast, uh, uh, fun to play. That is our idea, make something something fun and that has a message behind this but even even being fun it is a game that follows the classic shooter golden i 007 perfect dark metal gear so it has that uh, retro retro vibe that is our idea we plan inshallah god's winning very soon to make a mobile version is this against ah oh yep yep that just straight up spawned right in front of me emitter one spawn verticus what the hell it's just it's ramming me Okay, we blew each other up. Was that it? Did I, did I? Let's get the Zionist vehicle. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Falafel is Palestinian. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Oh my God, no, I flipped my vehicle. I'm out of the vehicle. Weapon, web name. Where's the web name? Fire, fire web name. 
I'm still controlling it at the same time. I don't know what's going on, guys. I, I am I I am without words for this game, guys. <laughs> but on the other hand, I really don't see what the problem is with the game's concept because at the end of the day, this is simply just a Palestinian version of what the United States has been doing forever, which is to portray themselves as the good guys and whoever opposes them geopolitically as the bad guys. They do that constantly with Russians and Middle Easterners. China, a couple of years back, also released a game that I believe was called Glorious Mission, which was simply just portraying the Chinese army as the good guys and the Americans as the bad guys. And naturally, the American media in a completely tone-deaf fashion made a big deal about this, like it was somehow so horrible to make a game where the Americans were portrayed as the bad guys, despite that being literally the only thing that the American uh, video game FPS industry has been doing. Like, they've been portraying everybody else but Americans as the bad guys. But on the other hand, what do you really expect from the American mainstream media? In terms of actual quality, the game can obviously best be described as a lo-fi, serious Sam type arcadey game similar to many mobile shooters. And while its demo was rather unfinished and certainly also borrowed assets, none of this really matters because this isn't so much a video game. It's a statement from someone who is fed up with how every culture or subculture that doesn't align with modern Western mainstream political positions gets portrayed as nothing more than soulless NPCs and cartoon bad guys that the glorious American Special Forces hero needs to eliminate. This developer genuinely wants to show that other civilizations and political philosophies also have a need to portray their own heroes in a contemporary format like video games and I truly think that it is hypocritical to describe the part of the video game that I have played or its trailer as a more negative portrayal of Westerners or Israelis than the portrayal that Call of Duty duty does of Russians, Middle Easterners, World War II Germans, or of course also the Japanese. That is all for today everyone. While this was clearly a one-man effort made by a non-professional developer with things like Fish AI missing, I think it is important to respect Nadal and people like him's visions because the influence of non-Western games with different agendas will continue to evolve in the future and this will likely give the average consumer some much needed nuance in an increasingly sensitive and polarized world. So I wish Nadal and people like him good luck in the future. And finally, for all the Palestinian and Israeli viewers out there, no, this is not a letter of support for any side. I have no dog in this fight whatsoever, and I recognize that it is a complicated situation. Also, finally, if you wish to watch the full version of the interview with Nadal, I have uploaded it on Patreon, so consider supporting me on there if you wish to check that or many more things out. Also, after this interview, Nadal was as nice as to give me a Steam key for the full version of the game, and I wish to say that it definitely has been updated. The gameplay remains basically the same, but there are some new enemies and obviously far more missions. Also, in the full version, the training mission actually does work, and the, the infamous Humvee Battle of Negev level is now fully and completely history. Something good that, uh, that this game for San Alaksa has shown to the whole world the hypocrisy of media in general terms. There are, there are too much hypocrisy. Uh, on all games, you have the NPCs, the classic, Russian, Korean, Chinese, and Arabs. That you have the, the template. So why, yes, so why, why this? Why are the Koreans cannot be heroes in a game? Why Chinese cannot be heroes? Why Russians cannot fight the invader? Why just that uh, template? Uh, American die and everyone else is the bad guy. Exactly. So I've these, always wondered that too, you know? You're down in their country. You're down in their country yeah. and they are the bad guys. Yeah. How does that work? Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Again, consider donating on Patreon. Everything goes a long way and is a great help because making these videos take a considerable amount of time and effort. I hope everyone has a wonderful day or night and remember, share the video everywhere you can. See you soon. Mm -hmm.